Okay, so yesterday Langchain issued a big update to their API. Uh, and it certainly made some interesting things. So in this video, I'm going to go through Langchain expression language, which is their new update of how you can basically do things with Langchain, how they've sort of gone back, I think, more to the concept of chains, and you can actually see what's going on a lot better than you have been able to in the past. So over the past months or so, Langchain has faced a backlash of criticism over two main things, over the docs being very confusing, and then over the API itself being overly complicated when it doesn't need to be like that. I think that the Langchain expression language is the key way that they're reacting to that and basically updating the API to make it much easier for people to see what's going on and be able to get a sense of what is actually going on under the hood as well as you're doing this and making it much more declarative. So we will look at some, some different kinds of chains with this new Langchain expression language. So first off, they've put out a blog post for this and they're calling it a new syntax. And it really is a nice declarative way to be able to define chains so that you can actually see what's going on in a chain much easier than before. So I know from reading people's comments and talking to people that a lot of people have had issues just understanding what is actually Langchain doing underneath the hood for a lot of these things. So certainly the new Langchain expression language, this new syntax makes it a lot easier for you to be able to see what's actually going on here. So they've put the language out. They've also put out a app that you can actually use to learn the language through a chat form. And I think they're going to open source that, which will be really cool to, to see. So in the blog post here, you can see that they're basically talking about different types of chains and different types of calls. So at its fundamental, Langchain is really about prompts and LLMs and how do you organize those? Then how do you incorporate other tools like passing the response back from the LLM, doing some vector search to find some data to put into your prompt for sending to the LLM? All of these are part of chains. So the cool thing with this new syntax is it makes it quite easy for you to see what actually is going on in here. So just if we look at this sort of really simple example, you can see that you've got your model, you've got your prompt, and then you chain it. This whole idea here of basically having the components of a chain and just piping them together so that you can see from one element goes into another element is what this is all about. Uh, and it makes it much easier to do things. Another thing that they've updated as well is that in the past, it was very confusing which chains could do batch processing, which chains could do streaming, could do async, that kind of thing. So all of that, they've also updated here so that it's now quite easy for you to basically run dot invoke for just running an, a normal chain. You can run dot batch for a batch chain. You can run dot stream for a stream chain. This, this is something that definitely makes it easier going forward as well. Let's jump in the code and then have a look at what they've actually added and look at some of the things that are in there. All right, so let's jump in and have a look at the code. So I uh, can see I'm just installing some really basic stuff. We've got Langchain, ChromaDB, DuckGo. We're using an AI in this case. And you'll see that actually at the start, I wanted to just quickly show that this can work with both the chat API and also the older one as well. It will actually work with the open source models and stuff as well. I can just use bring in so the hugging face model that should be fine for this. So okay, I'm setting up a model and model two here. We set up a prompt, and this is where the magic happens. So there's, these two are quite basic sort of things that you would do normally. Here is where the sort of change comes, and this is where we've got this sort of declarative way of defining a chain. So here we're basically just saying that the chain is going to be prompt, and then we've got the pipe command. And we're just piping the prompt into the model, and then that will give us our output and return that. So you can see that my prompt was, tell me an interesting fact about, and then put subject in. And here I can just put in the subject is Elvis and, and, and then basically run it. Now here I'm doing chain.invoke. I'm passing in just a dictionary of what I want to pass in here. If I wanted to do batch, I could just change this to batch. And then I put a list of these going in there and it would be able to work just as well for this. I wouldn't need to change anything about the actual chain itself to do this. So you can see here, because we used a chat model, it passed back an AI message with the result back. So if I want to strip that out and just get a string back, 
I can redefine the chain and basically say chain equals prompt pipe model pipe string output parser and then run that. And when I say run, I mean invoke that. And then you see that now we're just getting the string out back here. If we do the exact same thing with the other model, so this is the text DaVinci 3 model, you can see that we define it exactly the same way. We've got a prompt, we're going into the model, and then we've got the output parser just getting the string out. And we can see we invoke it now and we get a different result back. And the result back here obviously is quite different because the model is quite different itself. Next up, the thing that we can do is we can actually add bindings to this. So the bindings can be a number of different things. Here, the sort of one simple one would be just to basically add a binding of a stop. So this is kind of like where we're telling the stop token or the stop series of tokens for the model that's going in here. So we can see that we've got our prompt being piped into the model. Then we've got this bind stop equals new line. And then we've just got our parser. So you see here, I've changed it now to tell me three interesting facts about the subject. So really what the model would do is return a list of three things. And we can see that we're only getting one of them because we've basically got the stop after the new line. So where it finishes the first one, it then basically has a new line character. And that's because we've done the bind to stop there, it would actually stop there. Next main use of the bind is for adding in open AI functions. So here's a function schema defined in the way that you can pass it into OpenAI. You can see that this is basically, this is one of the examples from the Langchain site. They're asking for a joke and the joke comes in two parts. It has a setup and then it has a punchline. And both of those parts are required here. So the functions chain is going to be the prompt with the model.bind function call, passing this in and passing in the functions there. And you can see that basically once we invoke that, passing in that we want something about bears, we get back this result. And the content in the result is actually nothing, but the function call is basically our JSON that we get back. So we get here, the arguments are going to be the setup is why don't bears wear shoes? Punchline is because they have bare feet. This is a way that you can basically use the OpenAI functions in this new format. I will probably to make some a few videos about doing some fun things with this. I've been playing around with the functions a lot more recently for some other tasks. So this certainly makes it quite easy to basically put in the functions and invoke them on what it is that you're doing. Next up is output passes. So if we just wanted to basically get something back with these functions that we passed in and we want to actually get the JSON out, now we can basically add to this that we've got our prompt, we've got our model.bind with the function stuff. And then now we're bringing out the JSON output functions pass. Now, when we run the same thing that we did before, response, we've basically got a, a dictionary or JSON coming back there. And if we actually go into that, we can access it you know, as a dictionary to get out either the setup or the punchline. Another one that they have is JSON key output. So this is similar, but where you're specifying exactly what key name you want back. In this case, the key name is only set up for the setup, not for punchline. So we just get that back as a string here. Next up, we look at retrievers. And one of the key things here is that sometimes you want to pass something in and use it multiple times in the chain. For example, if we're doing a simple vector store and we ask the question, if we're going to ask a question, in this case, you'll see the question I'm asking is, who is James Bond? We want to basically ask that question first of the vector store. So we get back the relevant information from that. Then we want to put that into the in-context learning and pass that in with the prompt to the language model so that we can get an answer back. And then in that one, we also want the question as well. So if you think about it, the first one is we want to basically use the question to get our context. Then we, and we're going to pass that in, but then we also want to pass in the question again here. So this is where this runnable pass through comes in and item getter comes in. So these are basically used for passing something into the chain, which you're going to use multiple steps of the chain without the transformation going on there. Okay. We're bringing in a vector store, Chroma, we're going to use OpenAI embeddings and 
you can see that here, what we're going to do is just make a little set of fake docs about James Bond, right? So these are just a set of strings. And we're going to embed each of these with our OpenAI embeddings into Chroma from text there. And then we're just basically setting this up as a retriever. So now we've got our prompt, which we know that takes in the context, which takes in question. And then now we're going to set up the chains. The chain is first off the context. So we know that the prompt needs a context and a question. So here we're basically defining this context is going to be from the retriever. And then the question is going to basically be something that we pass through to use later on in the prompt as well. So these are both being set up here. So you can see we've got this set up. We can run it through with who is James Bond. It's now going through it and basically using that question first for the retriever. And then once that's filled out, that context gets used here. And then because we've used it once, we're now using it again. We've got this runnable pass through of the question being used again. So the question was first used for the retriever. Now it's being used for the prompt in there. And you can see, sure enough, when we run this, we get James Bond as a spy who works for MI6. What does James Bond like to do? Based on the given context, it can be inferred that James Bond likes cats, right? That's what we had in there. So you can add more to this too. And here's an example that they have of adding in that we want it to answer in a specific language. So now we've got three parts to the prompt. So we've got our context, which is going to be getting the question, passing the question into the retriever. That will give us back the context for this. We've got our question, which is going to be the question that we just pass in as a string at the start or as a question in a dictionary. And then we've got our language, which is also going to be something we're going to pass in via a dictionary. So these item getter things are used to basically get it out of the dictionary that you pass in. So you can see here we're passing in a dictionary and in that dictionary, we've got the question and we've got the language. So if I invoke this chain, I pass in, where does James Bond work? Language equals English. I get James Bond works for MI6. If I do the exact same thing with Italian, I basically get it in Italian. Now, the key thing here is that as we've gone through this, first off, this part has been run, right? Where it's getting the context via using the question on the retriever. So passing the question into the retriever. So we could actually do this with multiple retrievers. So if we had one retriever for a certain kind of documents, another retriever for another kind of documents, we could actually, you know, put these two and then combine them in here. And then we've got our question passing in and then our language. And this item getter is just basically getting it out of the dictionary that you pass in here. Next one up is some tools. Some tools here is just a simple use of DuckDuckGo. Again, this is not an agent kind of thing. It's not a React thing. What this is basically doing is that it's going to have the template, you know, where you're going to run it through a prompt first, go in, and the prompt is just asking it to rewrite it for a search engine. And then we basically run it through our output parser to get a string back, and then we pass that into the DuckDuckGo search. So when we pass this first one in, you can see this is what we get back here. If we didn't use the search and we just relied on the model, we can get a response back as well, but it's probably not as reliable or different than perhaps just doing a straight up search. Now, I think going forward, it will be interesting to take this and then take the search and pass it back into another prompt and model as well. Another one, just quickly to show you arbitrary functions. So this is another example from the Langchain docs. This one. They're basically taking some functions and just calculating the length of what you pass in here and turning that into a math question here. So you can see here we're passing in a dictionary of two that values. And we can see that first off, this value is basically something's going to be passed to a prompt. And the prompt is just going to be what is A plus B, right? So A is being using the item getter to get this. And then it's running it through this runnable Lambda length function, which is just going to calculate the length of that. And then we've basically here, we've got a text one and a text two going on again. Now we've got a runnable function of multiple length function. 
that's going on here. And you can see that this one is actually using another function in there as well as you go through it. And then finally it gets piped into the prompt, piped into the model, and then we get our output back. So when we run this thing through, you can see we get, okay, four plus 16 equals 20 in this case. So that's been calculated because this is four uh, long. In here, we've basically got four times four, which gives us the 16. And then the model itself is doing the four plus 16 in there. Okay, so this has been a few of the examples in there. Definitely in the next few videos, I'll look at using some more real world examples of putting these into action to actually do some tasks and stuff. I think definitely things like summarization, some of the chat stuff, all of this can now be done in, in quite different ways. So far, it looks like this new expression language replaces a lot of the chain stuff that was built in, but perhaps not agents. So you might see this, you know, in future, it gets added to basically to custom agents with this syntax, but it certainly makes it much easier for us to just see what's going on in the syntax that's here. Anyway, as always, if you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below. If you like this video, I'm certainly going to be doing a bunch more of the LangChain expression language going forward. So click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.